Girl, I want to see you twerk. I throw a little money if you twerk. I don't really think you can twerk. Twerk. If you broke, go to the most with twins in Savannah, Boris and Travis. What's up? What's up, guys? What's How y'all doing? What's up? What's up? I bet. So y'all party promotion team. How did it come about? Shit, actually, it was it was four, four of us. Four of us. Yeah. We started with four of us, and me and my brother we was on our own route. When we was in high school, we was throwing our own parties in high school, and people was like, y'all lit as fuck. Y'all need to take that shit to the next level. So once I got to Savannah State, mm -hmm. I had linked up with two other people that I had seen throwing parties, and I was like, we need to make our own team. And they was like, what are we gonna call it? I was like, shit, let's call it his Instagram name. It was our homeboy named Trey at the time. Yeah. His Instagram name was Get a Diddy. Get the Diddy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So shit, I was like, yeah, that's catchy as a fuck. We gonna just run with it. Shit, we just gonna do it like that. It just came about. We threw house parties at the house yeah. party, and we see our first thousand dollars. We didn't even party. really start for house parties. We start from kickbacks in the bill. Oh, we yeah. got so big from throwing the kickbacks in the bill. That's when they allowed everybody to have like these little birthday parties in the bill without like the fines right. and stuff. When Kemp wasn't really that strict for all the drama and stuff that happened on there. We really the reason why they stopped letting parties happen on camp because we tried to throw a party on camp and it was literally probably the whole bill field covered with people. Damn. Well, we couldn't control the amount of people that was in the room or outside the room. Right. Well, the police couldn't control nobody and it really turned into a riot. So then from then, that was like around homecoming. So from then, that's when everybody was like, you know what? Y'all really got to throw parties. It's four of us right now. Me, party club, Boots, he, she the host. And then we got CEO Flex. He basically do all the negotiations and talking to club owners and stuff because he a business minded dude. What are your expectations for homecoming? Uh, homecoming going to be big this year. Savannah State doing a good job by the people they bring in. And I think they're going to just change most of the people that been going to state lives because they didn't really see all this stuff coming back to back, like how they got it coming well, this us year. personally, we took like a yeah. little backseat roll. We got some big parties. We got a little Wednesday night kickoff party at Elon. That's for after little baby and um, after party. Okay. And okay. then Friday night, we got Island Breeze. Now that's going to be a stupid party. $300 <laughs> twerk contest. Hundred dollar banana eating contest, all kinds of little prizes. Yeah, basically, yeah, we got all kinds of crazy stuff. We host from New York, DJs from everywhere coming. Yeah, so it's like it's lit. We got special models. We're not gonna release that yet, but. All right. What was one of your most memorable parties? Uh, what you can think of. You choose one. You choose yours. I choose mine. You go first. I can say over the years, the most memorable party was us going to um, Panama with our twerk team. And the parties that we threw down there with them. Shout like, out to Tory Team. Uh, yeah, pretty, yeah, pretty cartel. Yeah. That's our Tory Team. Well, we gonna start that back up starting this semester. They taking a break right now. <laughs> but that was, it was probably like three years ago. Yeah, three years ago, we went to Panama. Yeah, my favorite party was probably is the warehouse party. We had found an abandoned warehouse in Savannah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, abandoned car warehouse. And we just started throwing parties there. And from there, it was just lit because that was our first real like bands personally to ourselves to right. see from a door. And I was like, that's crazy. We make $44,000, $4,500 off a house on a basically a free menu. We just added security in. It was dark as hell in there. So we just put like fake lights in there from the DJ. And it just worked out for the best. What's some clubs that you guys host the parties at? Uh, Mansion and Eli in the eight. That's the top one. Top one Mansion. The biggest one. Yeah, the biggest one personally. Oh. Yeah, Orange Cuts Cus also gives us our push for the last five years. We've okay. been like the main host of Orange Cuts. What's your next step into taking it to the next level? So, uh, we we'll get addicted. We we'll get addicted. The group wise, uh, person on the group, I feel like we already at the level we need to be. Now we just need to be more focused and get more money flowing. Like mm -hmm. as far as bringing in artists and locking in dates with the artists and having more of them come to Savannah and surround the areas so we can make a steady income where nobody got to work no more. Me and my brother, we really real entertainment. I made most of the dance in Savannah State Campus do. <laughs> like when they do the training topic, song, dance, all the get it, this stuff. Basically, we got that on Savannah State. Like, okay. me and my brother, we started that movement, that dancing movement on state. And ever since then, it took off. Now the whole camp trying to learn how to do these dances. Right, it's crazy right. we sit back and watch it now. So that was Yeah, it's it, it just crazy because we, yeah, we, we used to do up. it and people used to look at us like, what are y'all doing? Like, why y'all doing that? Like, mm -hmm. we used to teach other people like, come on, do it with us. Like, you do it like this, you do it like that. But now we don't even got to be around and we can see Snapchats 
of whole parties well with DJ Miami, DJ Keisha, everybody trying to do the get it did stuff. Yeah. That's Even though it might not be right. It's just right. the effort of them trying to do it. Yeah, they, the dance still living yeah, on. Yeah, it just fast. Yeah, just now yeah. our only goal is to get the dance expanded. We want it nationwide because mm -hmm. we already know it's a trend to catch a right, thing. Right. Any city we go into and we doing it more than ten people deep. People already just automatically like, oh yeah, let me do it, let me try it. Where y'all from? Where y'all doing this from? And we be like, we get it did, just get it did. So finally by say. Networking, so yeah, we just want to make sure it's all the way out there. We want it all the way in Cali. We want kids in Cali trying to hit us up. Oh man, I'm doing y'all dance. So, what is the party scene here in Savannah like compared to other areas? I mean, Savannah, the city wise, it's kind of slow because people in Savannah, the city, mm -hmm. ain't really party people. But Savannah State is all another ball game. Okay. It's lit. Okay. It's lit on Savannah State. So the state is more lit than the city. Yeah, the yeah. City, but we got city crowd. Well, we got the city us. crowd. It's okay. Like we just now getting to the city crowd, but they messing with us. But they not really with really the dancing way, but they coming through just to check out the scene. You feel me? So yeah, they like what we doing. They like the we trying to bring yeah. something new, like combine with other yeah. people, Fresh other people in the city, basically. Yeah. Okay. Not only just local stuff. What was the worst party y'all ever hosted? Oh, it's many. Oh, we took a lot of losses to be a boss. So yeah, that's my thing about real. this. This feel, yeah. this feel can make it look break you. Yeah. <laughs> it just if you want to keep going and keep, it just I give up. up. A lot of people give up because they get see that nobody came to the party one time. Like, dang, I ain't throwing parties no right. more because I just lost a thousand dollars on this party. Ten thousand, all on expenses, or ten thousand because they I brought an artist. I best to lose ten thousand. Damn, they yeah, bring an artist and nobody come. There's stuff Maybe, that happens, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. like man, we can have a party coming up. And I know we're a bad storm that night. Right, right, right. Now all the streets flooded in, so man, nobody coming out. Shit. Gotta go to other people, other people and other crowds and like, I got a party tonight. Right. Come check it out. Like, you got somebody else don't know. That's why we always win. So you believe you for people that other people won't know. So you believe networking is the key? Networking, networking is, is the key. Yeah. But do you believe an artist's political view can interfere with their music and how will they do yeah. streaming wise and making money? Definitely. Like um your fans is everything, but at the same time you don't always gotta live up to what your fans expect do what you do yeah believe in what you believe in but it always going to fit how somebody feel about you right because right. everybody don't got the same thoughts or the same opinions so the top person i'll probably listen to right now mm -hmm. is nebuchadnezzar somebody like him you know, he made that song called gas up shawty a couple years ago okay yeah, sorry, sorry. yeah but, mm -hmm. um i like this to a dude and roddy rich he's in la right now he's blowing up right now as we speak I like underground artists, me personally, before they blow into the industry because sometimes the industry changes them because you got Change the music. Right, right, right. Because they got a certain image they got to keep now since they're in the industry and they can't talk about everything because the record label or whatever. Like, but but I like industry them. artists like Lil Baby and stuff. Yeah, Lil Baby. I listen like to Lil Baby. Like Gunna, 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 yeah. You two being recording artists yourselves, how important is it for you to differentiate yourself from other artists? Uh, Personally, I just think we different because what we do, like, far as like party wise and how lit we is, how like the dances. Mm -hmm. We make a dance to every song that we make. That's one thing we do. We just rap, just the rap. We rap to like make other people like see our lifestyle and see to have fun. Okay, so we it's like a whole other feeling. Enjoyment. Yeah. Okay, so emotion. Yeah. Are y'all working on any brand new, any new music coming out? Yeah, uh, yeah, we got a lot of our own projects, a lot of songs that we're working on. But personally, we really focusing on this project that we about to release called Most Lit Twins in America, Get Addicted Volume One, and basically that's our first mixtape name, Get Addicted Volume One. Okay, is it in the works now? Uh, oh, it's already finished. It's in the works. It's, it's just finished, but, but yeah, we about to release it. It got a release date. We probably gonna release it next month or November. Okay. Around Thanksgiving. Yeah. All right, so we get to expect videos and everything. Oh, yeah, everything, all that. everything yeah. We're going to be streaming on iTunes, Spotify, everything. Type, you yeah. can think of, like, anything you probably put Google Music, anything you can probably type mm -hmm. in Most Lit Twins on, we're going to be on every platform. All right. Right now, we only on SoundCloud, though, so if you want to check us out on SoundCloud, just type in Most Lit Twins, and we're going to pop up. All right, bet.